Hey everyone, it's Raji here from Figma with a brand new series for you that I'm so stoked about. It's called Figma in 5. Now Figma in 5 is a deep dive in Figma on a certain topic in, you guessed it, 5 minutes. Have you ever felt so frustrated as a designer when you feel like you have a mastery of a tool, yet later you find out these great tips and tricks and you're thinking, had I only known these, I would have saved myself so much time. Well, that's what this whole series is about and it's here to alleviate, is just to give you that level up on knowledge in a certain topic in Figma and then, hey, maybe it'll save you some time and you can share it with your friends. Now, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Raji, I'm a designer advocate at Figma and I've been a career designer in the industry for over 15 years, starting out with tools like Macromedia Fireworks that I used a lot for product design and icon design, then using Sketch for product design, as well as Adobe Illustrator over the years for commercial illustration. Now, a few years ago, I fell in love with this tool called Figma, so much to the point where I was like, I have to work for this company. And now I'm here working, making these series for you, hoping that I can give you some of the knowledge that I've gotten over the last three years of working in Figma. So, hey, let's give it a try. Let's go. And on this very first episode of Figma 5, we're talking vectors. Let's jump right in. First up, shapes. Shapes you're gonna find in this menu. Now I've went ahead and dumped them all out on the screen for you so we can get going quickly. One thing to keep in mind with shapes is just hover it and you'll see these handles. As you adjust these handles, you'll see what you get. Anytime you select a shape, the properties will be available in the properties panel on the right. I can of course nudge up and down with my small nudge amount with my arrow keys. But if I use shift, I can use my big nudge amount as well here. The other thing that you'll see is that we have this icon but when we hover that icon, we can actually scrub this. So if I scrub this, I can scrub the border radius in a more analog way, and I can keep doing it with a wraparound in Figma. Moving on, uh, let's take a look at this arrow tool. The arrow tool's great. We can, of course, draw multiple lines with that arrow tool with arrow ends, but keep in mind that a stroke can always have arrow ends too. So I can go in and change the advanced stroke cap to a round, to a line arrow, to a triangle arrow, etc. Over here, we've got this circle tool. I like to call it the arc tool because right here, we'll see this little special handle. When we move it, we can actually change the sweep of that arc. We can change the ratio of that arc. We can also change the start point of this arc. If we, of course, take the ratio and move it completely out, now we just have a line. If we use shift X, we can swap the stroke and the fill. If I just use shift nudge and nudge that up, now I have a stroke. I can add those dynamics now that we just talked about. I can add a round edge to this. I can bump this up and move my stroke inside or outside. Keep in mind that these are not destructive behaviors. We still have the arc tool in play here. Moving on, we've got a polygon tool. Hovering the handles, we can see we can mess with the count. We can mess with the border radius on these things. Of course, all of those are available right here within the properties panel as well for us to scrub away and to express the shapes that we want. Moving along, we have the star tool. Star tool, we can actually mess with the count and up that, we can actually change the ratio and those values, of course, are all still scrubbable over here. This is shapes. Let's see what we can do with these shapes. Now, last in that shape menu, we have this place image. Let's give place image a try. I'm gonna take four or five images, open them. Now, when I first see this, I can place all my shapes on the canvas, but I can also click in objects to place those images as fills. Let's add them as fills here. Click, click, click. We've got these images as fills and we're all set there. Super handy little trick. That's Command Shift K for those that are trying to get some fast action shortcuts. Next up, let's talk about getting into the vectors of these shapes. So first off, we already know that we can adjust these points here, but how do we break this down to a vector primitive? Remember this command, it's Command E here. If I hit Command E, you'll see that I've actually broken this shape down and if I double click into that vector shape, I can actually see the nodes underneath it. I no longer, when I hover, have the ability to use those smart edit capabilities. So use this sparingly, but use it when you know you want to mess with things a little bit more. And this works for most all objects on the screen that are vector based. So if I use Command E on here, you can see this star tool. Now I can just adjust these individual points and change up those nodes. Same thing with text. If I use Command E on the text, I'm gonna flatten it into the vector geometry beneath it. Now, the key for getting into this is I can use this 
edit object, but I can also double click it and I can also hit enter. Three ways to be able to get into our vectors and mess around with our objects. See this fill here? If I come over here and select it on the edge, I now am selecting that property, the fill. If I hit command C to copy and I come to another one, I can hit command V to paste. Now, what I can easily do though, is come into the stroke area by selecting it. And if I hit command V there, it'll actually copy that fill into the stroke area. When resizing a shape, we may notice that we actually can squish that shape. In order to resize it uniformly, hold shift while you change it to resize uniformly. Now you may not want to actually resize from the left top corner. If you want to resize an object from the center, simply hold command, option, shift, and resize and it'll resize from the center. On the star, we have a fill of purple and a stroke of blue. Let's say we want this purple to be a little lighter. Simply hold shift and hit down and up to lighten and darken that fill. The cool thing about Figma is that we can actually have multiple fills on the same object. Let's do that here by adding a linear gradient. Those gradients and multiple fills each have their own respective blend mode. So let's say we add this linear gradient from white to transparent to overlay. We can now see that that overlay will actually pull from the colors beneath it. We can see here as we get darker that it works as planned. Each fill you can actually select and go and change that fill to different types of fill modes. Fit, fill, crop, and of course tile. And of course you can change the tile size here and allow that to tile within an image. Now let's go back to this crop setting. Crop settings, we can actually expand the size of this image, but sometimes when we're cropping images, it feels like a lot of work to go through these three menus. If we simply hit Alt or Option and double click on this, we'll go directly into image crop mode. With Figma, you can take an SVG and just simply copy the text and paste it right in. Case in point, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Bezier tool icon, copy the SVG for that, and just paste it onto the canvas. Figma knows that this is an SVG and it knows that we can go ahead and draw it right on the screen. On this vector star, I have a lot of complex styles going on with fills, strokes, inner shadows, and drop shadows. If I wanna apply these to this blob on the right, I'll simply hold Command Option C, and then over on the blob, do Command Option V, and it should transfer those over. As well, we can find this in the right-click menu under the Copy Properties and Paste Properties menus. And that's it for this episode of Figma in 5. Hope you learned a ton. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to keep this content coming. Have a great day.